Oh no, Rex is crazy. Oh yeah. Me and all the other founders of science, the guys that invented all the different fields of science, including the fields of geology, physics, mathematics, biology, all the guys that wrote all the laws that made all the actual headway, they were all on crack. Hey guys, Rex here, I got one for you. Who here honestly believes that we accidentally squirted out of a rock, okay? That there was a, a prebiotic soup, okay? And it got hit by lightning. The amino acids accidentally all were created, which are complex chemicals, and accidentally aligned themselves with the proper handedness to create an amino acid chain, a series of chains, a whole pile of them, all at the same time from the same lightning strike, okay? And those chains all accidentally made a perfectly coherent uh, polypeptide sentence. And that polypeptide sentence accidentally folded multiple times into its primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure in such a fashion to where it made a three-dimensional part of a machine of one tiny part of one prokaryotic cell. And then all that stuff happened 800 billion times on accident in the same place. And it all got hooked together and made your first prokaryotic life form or whatever similar life form they think was the first one on accident. Just squirt off freaking rock. Now that theory was viable before they had really good microscopes and before they knew anything about microbiology. Because back in the day, you look through a, a, a microscope and all you see is a blob that looked like an egg. You have the yolk, and then you have the white part. The yolk is the, you know, the nucleus, and the rest is squishy. It's just blobology, folks. Um, yeah, when they start seeing how the stuff in the cytoplasm is transported on a monorail proton-powered uh, tube, uh, microtubule system with a, a gradient on one side and the other, and they're actually directed to deliver certain things within the cell cytoplasm, like exactly where they need to go. It's not just juice and stuff ain't just floating around. It's actually got a transportation system and uh, all the different uh, chemicals that are needed to power the cell are synthesized using machinery that snaps them together using proton gradients and different membrane walls and different checkpoints, ball bearings on all the parts, transmissions to make sure everything runs properly. This is on the most simple ass organism in the world that you can find. And all this stuff can just be present. It has to be in place. And then you need metabolism to happen. Metabolism is uh, cellular respiration, right? So you need all the chemicals to be perfectly in place in the perfect chain, um, way more complex than a V8 motor, infinitely more complex than that. When you look at the full uh, flow chart of reactions, it happens just in any metabolism on the cellular level for stuff to exist and power itself. And then it just happened to accidentally get that breath of life or that metabolism to initiate with all the machinery properly in place and with the encrypted freaking code that lines up all the spare parts for machinery that also tells all the different stuff like how to stamp it out and also has the entire operating system for the entire thing in there how to reproduce what different uh, systems need to be in place so that if this happens it'll do this what instinct is in place all the different stuff so that this thing knows how to navigate eat find a mate get in love have baby whatever the hell it is or it's asexual in that case in which it wants to do that and then it makes baby ones by the way who here who here has created any robot in the world name me a scientist who created a robot from scratch i'm not saying using pre-existing technology which is biological material okay but a robot that builds other robots from scratch and programs them and sets them on the way that robot then grows up and becomes an adult robot and then creates more robots like on the movie terminator basically who here has created a robot society that can self-produce Nobody. Why? Because it's freaking complicated. It's impossible. Like, I mean, I'm sure if they figured that those robots would have to figure out how to mine, be creative, solve problems, calibrate machinery, create the robot, 
And then when the system gets jammed, it has to have all that stuff in place. Did you know that factories are not completely robot driven for cars and cell phones and everything? They have to have humans still on the assembly line. They're little screwdrivers. And even the most highly automated factories in the world, okay, the most highly automated factories still have humans looking over the shoulders of the machinery to make sure that when it breaks or gets stupid, they have to use intelligence to correct it. We're not even close with all the technology we've accumulated, okay? We're not even close to making that happen. Yet we think a freaking lightning bolt struck some mud and that shit accidentally fell into place. Well, if you have enough time, see, oh yeah, Actually, time, if you study thermodynamics, adds problems to your situation because all things tend towards disorder. That means stuff doesn't improve with time. It degrades. Chaos increases. Entropy increases. Order decreases with time. So it's, it's contradicting the laws of physics and chemistry. First of all, you have to have material evolution. They need to have chemical evolution, which is a different thing. And then you have to have the laws of the universe accidentally fall into place. Oh, yeah, you see, there was no laws at one time of the universe, like gravity, magnetism, you know, all this different stuff. Faraday's law of electromagnetism, like Newton's laws of physics, mathematics, symmetry. That didn't exist, but it accidentally, what freaking bolt of lightning hit something that wasn't there that made that happen? You know where I'm going with this, don't you guys? It's silly. It's just plain silly. And like I said, I mean, like, if you want to read a microbiology textbook from, like, 2000 and whatever, any stuff that's made after 2010 starts to show you what's really going on. Now, if you didn't just do a fake-ass job in your biology class and just try to get an A, but you actually read the book to learn what was in it, if you read the book, I'm telling you, guaranteed, one trillion percent chance okay actually the odds are a lot more than that this stuff was not an accident it's statistically impossible in the entire known universe the probability that any one polypeptide chain would accidentally occur and you, if you don't even know what a polypeptide chain is you need to look at the actual chemical reactions needed to create each one of those amino acids they're like letters on a page that are three-dimensional and they have to be orientated properly or they ain't gonna even work in the system and then it has to spell out a coherent sentence throw me a bunch of uh alphabet soup all over your table until it writes me a novel how many freaking years do you have to pour it on the table and that's giving you the noodles, not having the freaking noodle accidentally squirt out of a rock. It's impossible. So what I'm saying is like God invented everything. That's been the hypothesis for a long time. And if you go off of science, it has to be observable. It's the only thing that was recorded, by the way, by humans, because there was witnesses who saw it and wrote it down. Every culture agrees Every single culture of antiquity has the same exact story. If you look far, back far enough, started off with two people. They were built along with the planet for express purpose of this wonderful test that we're participating in. And only in the last days would people get so stupid and so clueless, and so brainwashed, and so desperate to escape his presence because of our wickedness, that we would invent retarded ideas like, oh, that geometra over there in that field, that actually squirted out of a rock, you see. Uh, there was uh, geologic uh, processes. The earth was squished in which all the, the, the veins of coal uh, spontaneously combusted, which created a furnace in the iron veins. All the, the, the iron actually poured into this uh, unibody mold. And then the engine was, you know, part the aluminum parts were made from over here, and that accidentally molded into this. And then the screws accidentally, over a million years, rolled and rolled in the river, and they're against a sharp rock, and threaded them with the perfect pitch, all the same exact right size screws. They screwed together to put the freaking intake manifold on, and then all that shit accidentally happened. The 
piston rings, etc. The computer, the ignition system. See the brass wiring and the copper wiring. That all, or the copper wiring all like accidentally like squirted out of a, extruded out of a rock because there's a hill that like fell over and then it's there's a hole in a rock and the stuff squirted out and there happened to be some kind of. Uh, tar-like substance that coated the wires so they wouldn't short out and it all perfectly wired the headlights in the same spot put a spinometer in there put chairs in there and now the geometro sitting in the field because it accidentally squirted out of the damn hill dude a geometro is infinity times more simple than the most simple procreate karyotic life form period and it doesn't even build it geometros cannot reproduce if they can, somebody better show me because I'm going to videotape that one. Dude, God made us. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> oh, no, Rex is crazy. Oh, yeah. Me and all the other founders of science, the guys that invented all the different fields of science, including the fields of geology, physics, mathematics, biology, all the guys that wrote all the laws that made all the actual headway, they were all on crack. But you're smart because you read a book that was influenced by the university. And the university was influenced by freaking Lenin with a political motivation to erase God. Because if you erase God, well, then who's the coolest cat on the block? Lenin would be the coolest cat on the block because he made a plan to create a utopia society. Where, But the, the problem with the utopia society with Lenin in charge or Karl Marx, right? These guys that were in the same religion as Charles Darwin, okay? They had to invent this religion that would remove the all-powerful heavenly creator so that they could take the throne and now governments are God. Well, that's awesome. The same retards that run the post office and every other place they can't even freaking keep a balanced checkbook is the ones that created the unit. I mean, like, okay, that's a good plan. And it's interesting to me to see folks who are awesome Patriot Liberty guys who are like still tickling that idea. They don't realize it was literally a communist conspiracy that only happened in the mid 1800s to erase God so that literal communists could be in charge. Why such the pressure on the universities and the schools to push that? Follow the history of the theories. Where did they come from? Did you ever actually read The Principles of Geology by Charles Lyell? The book is more of a rant against religion than it's about geology. Plus, the guy didn't know shit about geology if you read the book. The modern geology stuff that they got in the books now is like totally like inverted from what he said. He came up with uniformitarianism and the geologic column and all that stuff. But like, show me in reality where that exists. And it's in the way he said it did. Or like Origin of the Species. That's only a small part of the title. The rest of the title ain't exactly politically correct. Because Charles Darwin also had a sick, twisted religion in which his race was the only race that was good. Why don't they teach that in school? Well, because it's not politically, you know, proper for, in, you know, having the entire world under your control. Because we're going to make the other races angry now. Because we moved beyond the nation states. We're going for a one world deal. That's why they adjusted the thing. But still, they put him up on a pedestal. Anyone ever actually read Origin of the Species? The dude was training to be a priest. He had no scientific background. He was a naturalist. And then he rode on a boat and a beak's... A bird's freaking beak was pointier on one island than on a different island. Congratulations, Einstein. I could have told you that shit. I mean, of course, stuff varies. People breed horses and dogs all the time. Within the genetic parameters allowed in those kinds of animals. It's funny. People are going to go down a rabbit trail arguing on it. But remember, they think a geometro accidentally squirted out of a rock. All right. Build me a toaster that can have baby toasters, and then we'll have a conversation. <laughs>